答えは常に塔の上にある間に合う間に合ったらアリーナに売店ぐらいあるよなアフタースクールeverybody welcome back to the webtoon episode of the podcast we're going through all the great series tower of god lookism viral hit and god of high school and uh, we're gonna start off with some tower of god and before we get into these chapters oscar uh recently binged the entire series like the madman he is i forget where were you at last time before you did the reread uh i was uh just as the elder of fug transported bam to the uh, wall that's one floor below the one where Yama was at. And this was right before they went inside the wall. That's That was the last chapter that I was on. And then I read, reread the entirety of, of the series from season one to season three current. I, I'll tell you, it was, uh, it was definitely re- worth rereading. Uh, with the intensity as it is, everything that builds up to the moment where like, uh bam finally gets off the train you know at the last station i think is like when like like uh bam takes precedent like as being a man you know as like being the leader of the group like i don't i don't really think before that bam was really the leader i think that bam was just like the icon like moving on to season three is more about like how we we go about experiencing bam becoming this this responsible uh leader Uh, not really like a boss you know like he like conjures up his own plans he like uh, kind of takes fealty with people who are loyal to him and his friends you know he never like backs down or like tries to betray anybody on a promise that he makes he's going to be the entity of every good and pro about like jihad and like how he built up his way to the tower but without like the the greed of of that uh of the exchange like i don't know if you remember but like they made it very clear uh i think it was like in season two uh after uh fug uh had kidnapped bam uh and they uh gave him the uh uh the thresa that was in the in the sink or bowl or whatever it's called he he ends up talking to it. Oh, you mean you mean you mean the souls? No, not the souls. The ladle? No, not, the, not the soul ladle. Okay, so the the monster. I don't know if you remember the monster. It's like a blue monster. When when uh when he uh talks to the the demigod or the, like the god of the gods in the train or whatever the fuck, uh, makes Bam like look within himself to find his true power. So he, he talks to uh this this like uh this thing, which is technically an administrator, but it's a thresher. And they, this dresser came, I believe, from when Fug had kidnapped Bam uh, uh, after the fishbowl incident, when Rachel pushed him down. Uh, and then it's like, uh, he's talking to him, and he basically says, hey, you should take my power. I can offer you the power of a king, uh, but just, like, just understand that even if you take this power, you know, like, you're just going to be doomed to be, like, jihad, you know? Like, that's basically what he told him. And he just, he, you know, obviously he refuses the power because he says he doesn't need it. Like, that's not the power he wanted. Blah, blah, blah. But, like, right then and there, like, they made it pretty clear. Like, okay, so that's basically what Jihad did. He just took the administrator's power. And he probably, I'm just thinking to myself that by the time that he reached the end of that, the, the floor, the 124th floor or whatever, that's probably, like, the administrator of administrators. And he took his power. You know what I mean? And that's why he doesn't let anybody go above him because there are more administrators or some bullshit like that. Yeah, there's something above 150 that Jihad doesn't want people to know about. Like, it's, 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 it's probably, it's almost enough to probably overthrow the, the current uh, laws in the tower um, or something to that stature. Because uh, it seems like everything that Jihad's been doing so far that we've seen him is kind of too like, well, okay, well, before I get too further of my, myself, it's, it's like, I feel like Jihad wants somebody to to break his laws so that he'll be, I don't know what his back, what his uh, reasoning behind it is or this feeling is, but I feel like he has like 
he he's waiting for somebody just to like throw everything off because i don't know if if I don't know if it's because of something we read before, but like, it, it feels like he was kind of forced into this position. That's why he's kind of like not talking to anybody right now. I guess I, I don't know. I could be just talking to my ass. Yeah, that 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 fits with his character. I think uh, you know because with all the flashback stuff we got about him and all the other leaders of the great families, Bam's parents, and kind of like just seeing the differences between when he was traveling throughout the tower right when bam fought his data version and then seeing yeah. that very short glimpse of him in the present and just seeing how different they are yeah like something something went down um also i guess his obsessiveness too is, is a big part of that as i was rereading through um and i got back to that part like the hidden floor um i thought that was one of my favorite arcs by the way i think that was one like story is like really like uh the most you know interesting in that arc, you know, they talk about um, young Jihad. He meets um, King Jihad, right, in that instance at the very end when he gives him the uh, the bracelet. Uh, and he uh, he tells him, he's like, you know, like, why would you give that to him? Like, you know, like, you have no idea, like, what the hell you're, like, you're even trying to do. And he's just like, but I can tell that you're bored. He's just like, you, like... He's like, I don't know what happened to you since the last time I met you, but, like, I can tell that you've, like, become the person that, like, like grew into a fear, which isn't, like, the way that, you know, like, I left, you know? And he's uh, just, like, talking about, like, destiny and what he learned going up the tower, but he, like, just says, like, it's kind of an excuse, like, more or less. You know, so I think it's, like, kind of, like, he's he knew that this was going to happen no matter what, that somehow, some way, Bam was gonna come, a grace of some kind, V of some kind, you know, like it was just never, he knew that he was destined to that, it was never going to die. And at that point, I feel like he's just kind of embracing what's going on and just kind of going within the moment to just get rid of everything by all means before uh, he realizes that, you know, he's he's becoming, like, more closer to Enryu, which is getting true because, um, you know, he's, they're, like, on what? They're on 4, 4, 53, 52, and Enryu's on floor 77. No, that's where uh, uh, Yurik is, is, on 77. Yeah, but on floor 77 is where the base is. That's where, uh, where that, uh, I want to say Wolfgang well, well hike song you mean your oh you mean eric yeah, Eric and the, the the wings why does it seem like every person with like blonde or like gold hair or whatever like are are after or are like either they're trying to overthrow the current tower's laws or um they're destined to overthrow the tower laws except for bam but I don't know if I, I I don't know I could be making this up, but wasn't his mom a blonde too? No, she had brown hair. What about his Black dad? Hair. Black hair, yeah. No, yeah, um, yeah. Out of the original people that climbed the tower, it was only Jihad that had the blonde hair. I, I, don't, I don't think that's fair. I don't think we've seen all ten families. Uh, I th- I'm pretty sure we have at some point. No. Yeah, only- we we need, we would have to write it down. Honestly, we have to find it. I, I haven't counted. Be honest with you, but I think we've only seen like seven, or at least seven, and mentioned eight or nine. But I don't think that we've actually seen all ten, you know, or like a variant of all ten. And then there's also that, you know, like I don't, re- I don't really know if you guys have noticed, but like the Ha family, they're just fucking everywhere. Like, oh yeah, has blue, or Yura Ha is blue, Yuri Ha, whatever her name is. Um, you know, like uh, I forgot what his fucking math uh, his name is um bam's master he's just got regular brown hair you know yeah yuri has black hair like it's just fucking everywhere there's more haas too like i i know that there's more there's like tons of them yeah i think haas and coons and well yeah more recently the lopobia they're the most common ones there's the rl too and i think the rl is the that um that girl the command the sub commander for a caliban one who could do like the swords of light moves she has blonde hair too there were a lot of things man and uh, like i said it's just really good to catch up most recently i know that yeah they're in the middle of the game 
from where we left off, it was Han Sung and um, this cat guy. I don't remember his name. Yeah, Haas Racha. Haas, yeah, Haas buddy. Racha. Thank yeah. you. Haas Racha. That... Haas Racha, Haas yeah. Haas Racha, yeah. I'm not going to lie, guys, with these chapters, which are uh, 7173, as I was going through, I'm like, don't really have a lot to say about the fight. Um, it kind of just was there. I didn't really care about the backstory with whatever these people were that Yasracha was more or less, in, you know, enslaving. I don't know, like the yeah, the backstory with stuff. I'm like, ah, it's not what I was here for in this arc. Like more exposition. Like I like the Lauren Tower, but when I want to see it, kind of thing, right? Like there's yeah, a that guy's that guy's dead. Like what? Well, I I don't know. I don't, yeah, I get it. Like I don't I don't get why we have to see his backstory if he's already just gonna gonna like die within the next the next panel or so. Maybe it's just filler. I don't know. I don't. I think personally it was just to there to replace what would have been a fight. Like I don't really. I think one thing in the long run is this this guy Hot Sriracha. He was just kind of really too dumb to understand what sriracha was going to be doing to him and literally every other race that he offered that to all at the same time you know what i mean like i'm sure that would have happened eventually to everyone. yeah like there's totally that's it was his intention the whole time and he just couldn't understand that or see that so mm-hmm. i don't know that to me it was just kind of like that's a hindsight on your part bro like you're just kind of fucking dumb but yeah for him to die off like rather quickly i don't really mind that it was just really cool, I guess, to just kind of show off what kind of uh, person, I guess, he's changed into, which I think is kind of like what more or less we were supposed to grasp from this chapter. Uh, just how like he's changed from like the data version that we met of him, where he's like kind of slang telling, he's like, ah, oh, motherfucker, you know, I was trying to just do things perfect because I'm a perfectionist, you know. And now he's just like, eh, I don't really care. So I was just like, okay, you know, like, at least he's changed on that part, meeting up with Ryan Co. Uh, I don't really know how he's going to feel, though, because that last part of the chapter, which, you know, skipping over everything else, because everything else is just pretty much that bullshit with Hot Sriracha. Oh, and the fight with White, but that ended kind of really quick, too. There's kind of really nothing to, like, see there. Um, but I think at the end, like... I, I'm really, like, curious as to what Yvonne Kell was talking about when she was talking about, like, I don't really think that, um, like, Hain Sung is going to be, like, excited to know where we're going or excited to know what I'm intending on doing when we get there. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, okay, so, like, do you have intentions of, like, things, like, that could fuck everybody over? Like, what is it exactly that you're finding that you don't want anybody to get? And you know what I think is happening? I think within this little vault... There is an ancient there, an ancient element, and I'm thinking that it's the stone element, and that rock is is, is definitely going to be able to get it, or that if anything, Yvonne Kel might die, considering that she's wounded, right? Uh, and then uh, uh, Rack will end up getting two spirits because he's actually a direct descendant and can probably absorb, probably like all of them you know yeah I, I remember we i think we tossed that idea before yeah when we when we did the tower segment um i would like to see that but i, I think i i would say i think if is going to be fine because if they were going to do that i i would say it was going to be before this like during when she got sniped in the head yeah so like she like we said she already knows where she's going it was just it, it was just a matter of time before Han Sung just came up and and met up with her, and I'm da- I'm glad that that she's actually down with him tagging along too, because they they're they're a good team. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this, Oscar, since you just reread it all, uh, especially with season two, because my complaint with the fights in these chapters is the fights themselves and how boring they are. I still. You know, I almost forgot that the fights could be like this, where it's just panels of close-ups and faces and just a bunch of shinjutsu just flying all over the place. Because I, I really miss how the tower fights used to be. They're just too big now. I definitely agree with you. I think that the more power they've gotten, the more the, str- 
the struggle has lessened. Like, they always try to put on, like, these, this big air about how, like, everything is now more intense than ever. And I can understand that plot-wise. But, like, considering what kind of powers you have and, like, how every single encounter, regardless if it's with, like, a main character or a side character, like, you're just going to level up somehow, right? It's just, like, it's a pointless matter to, like make it so that way it's just like barely scratching and grazing each other or like you know giving somebody like a death like defying blow and like all of a sudden they can like you know miraculously recover you know like or like have an intention to level up you know like and just kind of like bring in that god of high, high school stuff that was going on recently you know like with Dawe and this uh ryu guy like kind of blowing each other's like body parts away and then just kind of still going anyway like, that's kind of, like, the same intention I get when I think about these kind of fights. It's like, oh, mm. like you have, like, both of you have the power to kill each other exactly in one hit. But it, like, miraculously, it's like you guys are just getting just increasingly better with each other at this very exact moment that you guys are fighting to avoid getting one hit killed by each other. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, like, glass cannon shit. Like, yeah. Like, that's... that's that's like the intensity that they keep trying to put you on when they talk about how big these fights are getting but back then like season two and it's like an actual struggle when you don't have any powers when you're powerless you know like i think that that's when we see a lot about like wang, wang hang or wang hong or the the blonde guy the the red light prince yeah wang gang yeah uh like i always think about like how his like his like kind of like little plot device comes into play and how he's kind of witty and smart and he's like you know what we kind of wanted like isu to be if isu was always around all the time you know what i mean like he's great mm -hmm. you know and it's just like now now that we get to this point i'm only hoping that as we get closer towards this you know this little crystal thing like whatever the fuck and like you know we actually go inside the vault and we get to see who's inside and like what we're fighting and dealing with all of that shit and like all this other stuff with princess Mash uh, machini that we're gonna get those really close and intense moments because we're not gonna be like you know in this giant war zone where you know everybody's just basically exchanging key with each other like this is like fucking tenkaichi 2 you know what i mean i i think that we just need to just wait a little bit further and hopefully these fights will kind of recede and we'll get those more intense moments that aren't so like heavily covered with plot, like what they were just doing with the hot sriracha and Hen Hen Sung fight. Um, I like I said, I think for that fight they just kind of replaced the entirety of what the fight could have been, and like uh, just replaced it with his backstory. And just just at the end of all of that, he's just like, okay, nice nice story. Now you die. Bye bye. And that's it. I just hate how flashy it is for no reason just these giant kamehameha nonsense that's flying around you know they're just shooting water all over the place with the shinsu yeah i just don't find it as engaging as it used to be and you know i you would think like the higher you go the stronger people get the more intense the fights would be kind of like how in god of high school is because even though it is flashy like like you said right with uh with ryong and daiwei but there at least they're still punching each other. They're not like 30 feet away shooting these giant like, uh, water blasts, right? Yeah, that, that was a good fight. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, going inside of the vault, you know, they're going to be in like close quarters. Or at least I can only hope that things will be in close quarters. I, I, okay, I don't exactly know where Machini is. Because they're obviously like they're inside of this hall somewhere. I think they're like either on like the command ship or they're already inside the vault in which case like I kind of already like made the connection that the inside of the vault was going to be like some royal palace you know considering that it was the the leader of the lopoi bay's buys um little Lopo secret Bia. yeah yeah like, little secret spot i'm like yeah no it's pretty cool like we're gonna get to see some shit i can only imagine what's inside though that's what i'm really waiting for uh like in real life time i think we'll probably get there i hope i hope by like maybe november or december yeah i don't know we'll we'll see man the back half of these chapters was focusing on bam and the decisions he had to make as well as uh white coming in and says like okay it's time to cash in i'm about to eat bam up 
that's probably going to start the the next few chapters right they're going to fight uh and i think that's going to be pretty good man i kind of want to see bam go all out again rather than just doing what he's what he did in these chapters uh similar to what we had uh before the uh the uh, hiatus that we got what do you guys think about like the game in itself that's that's kind of like one thing that's kind of been bothering me. it's all right i mean no i, I feel like no other no other race could have done it, at least no other person, because Yasracha is a, a fuck, and uh, he he does fuck things, and this is a big fuck thing. So this is a this is right up this feel like this is right up his alley, and I feel like everybody, especially Yama, is like, dude, let me just fucking fight you. So we're, we're like we're we're kind of all in it too. It's like good filler, but it's like yeah, this is Tower of God. This is just a this is a game just to... It sounds more complicated than when it really is. You just gotta move forward, fight whatever's in your way. Like how Bam said when he when he was done fighting everybody, he's like, man, I can't help it. I gotta go save my master. And that's the right attitude to have. You have like a bunch of like different personalities in this, in this ring. Yeah, I agree with Jerry where it's like, it's very much up his alley. Uh, I still... It, I don't know, it's weird because I did miss this kind of stuff. Uh, from tower because you know we got distracted from climbing it and you know i said it in the last episode too but like pop up like this to where it's like oh we're gonna hit the brakes on this assault to this vault and it's like let's all play a game instead let's let, let's fight rationally let's put some rules that just feels really off to me and the whole time i'm thinking like yeah aren't we in a rush to get in here because you know they have to fight an army so time is of the essence and we're just slowing stuff down so that that's the part i'm not really feeling uh, like I said, with the whole Bam versus White, which was, you know, eventually going to happen during this journey. That's what I'm looking forward to the most. But other than that, it's like, yeah, we're just doing this as, I guess, set up before whatever SIU is going to be really doing. I know that they, they kind of spit that logic behind it, like, right before the fight. Um, I think they were talking something about, like, uh, how, like, they were just going to end up killing them. You know, killing each other either way. But, like, this way, at least, like, they weren't going to... You know they weren't going to attack the people who were injured, or you know, whatever the case was. So like they, they were just kind of like trying to like play fair by twisting their arm, kind of egg, just egg them into it, just saying, hey, you know what? Like why not? Like if you're fast enough, then you know, which is of the essence anyway. You know that was kind of like the point of doing it within the, the time limit or the turn limit. I'm sorry. Then they were just going to end up you know going to the spots that they needed to. And that could have already included inside of the vault, you know what I mean? Which is kind of what Bam's intention is. He's just going to go supposedly right to the, uh, uh, you know, his leader, uh, his master. But I'll tell you, it was one thing that's shitty. Is we, and I feel like this hap- this kind of happened on both sides. But we already knew that this was a trap. Like, Yasaracha is, like, talking about, like, how, like, the... You know, like, the, the upper echelon is already talking about how the game is always going to end up no matter what. You know, where, like, where the dice is going to be rolled and who's going to get what and what. You know what I mean? Especially with that monster that they threw in there that I think is probably with Bam. Uh, right? If he jumps, which, you know, he's definitely going to do. But with White there, I'm not sure. I mean, the only thing that I can say is I know that with this being like a whole battle of souls that white is probably going to get absorbed by bam and he's going to get like a glimpse of like just how much power bam has and just realize that he's like a literal fucking monster like like enryu monster and if he ever like gets out which i think he can because he's kind of like a demon of souls and like kind of knows his way around that kind of stuff then he'll like kind of live to live to kind of tell the tale and like turn around and kind of be friends with Bam or kind of teach Bam how to use a lot of soul stuff or if Bam doesn't really kind of absorb all of his soul, soul techniques just from having him with from within you know like I can only just imagine like how much of like of a power boost that he can get from absorbing some of this shit and like I think that he can also learn Shinsu shapes if that makes sense like he doesn't just copy yeah powers. it makes perfect yeah sense. exactly like he wouldn't just copy powers he would just copy everything, dude. Like, kind of, kind of like what Han Sung is doing. Yeah, exactly. With that black hole arts, she was nuts. Mm, yeah. He just 
kind of makes it out happen in his own way, you know. It's like it's like when Bam was, Bam was learning how to do the orb all over again. Like it it, it gets deeper. The the more control Shinsu you have, it's like it feels like it's never ending. Like it's just it constantly shifting, like water. Huh. Yeah, for Hung Sung Yu and uh, Bam, it's water. Well, Shinsu itself is default think of it like, water. Yeah, think of it like the moisture in the air, and then just they just pack all that shit together. Yeah. And then just blast it. I, I fucking dig that, dude. I dig that so hard. Now it takes tributes, you know, so it's like it is and then it isn't. Like, you know, for Taliban, it's never going to be water. It's going to be fucking... It's, it's like some bra- some essence bravery. Some bravery no, essence. It's, it's, yes. it's just light. <laughs> Kine- yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, like, yeah he's, a, yeah, he's a nuclear man. Which I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I get that. Yeah, for sure. I feel that. I guess it is. De- it it does depend on what you find in the tower. Uh, it, it seems like there's a bunch of stuff in 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 like the floors that how, uh, really haven't been touched or used by anybody. Like, and it's just waiting for somebody to just grab the power and just just be that that user. Yeah, the thing with tower, it's just too big. Yeah, like now that you're caught up, Oscar, you know it's time to read next. Is the wiki for tower. <laughs> because boy there is so much information in there that is never brought up in the series and uh it's crazy man because uh, we get more info about the other irregulars in there and uh, let me tell you there's some bullshit in there yeah you, you start getting this info about um god what the hell is it dumb shit called axis powers yeah it's these fucking people <laughs> Yeah, it makes you think, like, what's the... Why are we even going through this, honestly? If I had to guess, yeah, the demon thing uh, is probably going to show up and fight Bam and White, but White's going to step back a bit, I think, just to see what Bam is really capable of. Because that was the other thing with Bam in these chapters, right? Other people were saying, like, hmm, yeah, look at this guy. He's He actually beat them all within 10 minutes. He's stronger than uh, a ranker now. You know, I guess your average ranker, I guess. Like, he's already yeah. in that tier, which I've said before in the past, like, that's crazy how fast we jumped to that point. Because the the point before that, they were, what, D-rank regulars? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just kind of kind of chop in there really quick. I kind of think it was ridiculous how all of a sudden they kind of had to pull this out at the last second. And I think the reason why is because he realized that he couldn't keep going with the list. Like, by the time that he got up to where, like, Season 3 was at, he's like, okay, I'm already at B-rank. They're at C rank. You know, I can only get to A, and then it's like, what? Like, they haven't even gotten to the top of the tower yet. They're just going to be, what, A rank, A rankers, for, or A rank regulars forever? You know what I mean? It's like, there has to be a better way. And then, like, he, you know, like, all of a sudden, like, just kind of throws this in here into the mix. It's just like, every floor has a testing area where you can fight a ranker. You know, like, you can just get assigned to be at high power, even though you're a regular. You know what I mean? And all of that just kind of spreads throughout... Like, I just have a feeling, like, Bam could have done this forever ago. He really could have. I don't really understand why that wouldn't have been a thing forever ago. I mean... Well, the fighting the Ranker thing, I I don't think he got to that level until the start of Season 3, after the time skip stuff. I I really don't think that that's true, though. Because he's held his own against, like, plenty. He's even, like, fought for Raka... Like, I wouldn't say to, like, a stand-on level like Yuri does, but he's definitely, like, survived. You know what I mean? He's fought, like, fucking, like, Jihad, like, all this other stuff. And I'm like, come on. Come on, bro. You're not about to tell me that this nigga couldn't hold his own against, like, a uh, supposed high Well, you have to remember that the at the end of Season 2, he tried popping that second thorn, and it was not having it. Like, his body was already at the limits. He was really struggling being able to use any of that power. And that's why he hasn't even popped the second thorn yet because uh, Evankel told him not to because he has to just get strong without it and then he'll get to the point where he can use it and that and his body won't break when he's using it. He, he doesn't realize that it's a mindset thing. It's, it's not really like a physical capability that's withholding him. He doesn't understand that he, he's thinking like he's a well. Like he's supposed to hold in a certain amount of shit. But they're always telling him, don't do that. Think about the flow of Shinsu. 
you know, don't think about yourself as a well. Think about yourself as like a flowing faucet or like, you know, like a like a constant flowing river. You know, which is something that Hang Sung actually says and like talks about with like his Shinsu style. So I'm just kind of waiting for Bam to kind of realize that he's like basically filling up an ocean. You know, it's it's never gonna end. It's just gonna be overfilling always. Well, you have to remember because it's not it's not even brought up that often, but um, he does have that um, pool of Shinsu that he's constantly filling this entire time that he just I don't even think he taps into it at this point, but it yeah, it's there. The water dragon? He uses it all the time. But no, remember uh, I think Ivan Kill told him uh, during their training that's just like, yeah, you're just going to keep putting because, you know, Shinsu regenerates over time, like Chakra and all that. And so he's just putting a bunch of it into this pool that's always there that he could pull out whenever he needs it. But he said for normal people that Shinsu is something that regenerates. Because, again, like, they can only hold a finite amount or can only have a capacity of finite. But Bam is different. Bam has the ability to, like, constantly gather it like an ocean. Kind of almost what he talks about. So in this case... You know, like, he basically tells him that he can circulate it, so that way he can keep gathering it, but the circle will basically get bigger, you know, because there's always more Shinsu added to it, and he can do it from... Yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah, he's, he's putting more Shinsu into it all the time. Yeah, but what I'm saying is he, he does constantly use that ability, though. He's always using that Shinsu. No, 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 what I'm saying is he's not tapping into that Shinsu. Yes, he is. That's what I'm saying. It's called Water Dragon. That's that he does that. Mm, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, that's. I feel like that's most of what's what's happening because there's there's so there's just so much, dude. There's a lot of info to like. That, that's why we're like we just gotta watch, read the week, you know. Because it, it's it's like we gotta read it while the new chapters coming out. I'm 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 about to start because th- there's a lot of stuff that I missed. Like I, I lost count on how much. I I remember I had a good grip on on how. How many powers, or what kind? Yeah, what kind of strength he had in him, or Bam had in himself, and then after, say that the, the Hell Train arc, I kind of lost count already. So it's like he, he keeps absorbing more, and I'm, just reading his escapades. I hope that the outcome that happens with White is good. He takes more of the souls that uh, White has within him. So instead of a million souls, he'll have like I don't know, ten million, a hundred million, like however much like white has now to, to make him white again, you know? And he'll just go back to being like whoever he was before. And, like I can think of like only so many ways that that power would come in handy. Yeah, hopefully we'll see in these next few chapters here what's gonna happen with that. Uh, that's really the only thing I'm looking forward to right now. You're not looking forward to Yama? I feel like everybody's sleeping on that. I'm, it's like what I said earlier, man. It's just like I don't really care about this game that they're playing. Like I kind of just want to get that over with and then just continue forward with what we were doing. The other thing, too, is that this game, right, this isn't where we left off with the hiatus. This is all new stuff after the the year break SIU did. So, I, so to me, that it feels like, yeah, like filler, kind of like what Jerry said, right? It's like, okay, let's ease our way back into the series with something simple Instead of having characters all over the place into this crazy all-out war, let's actually have a structure so that way we could pinpoint exactly where the characters are. I'm just like, I, like I said, man, when they put the brakes, I was like, mm, I'm okay. Like, I, I kind of just don't like that. It's like, for you, basically nothing happened. Uh, which is, a, it's a, just a means to an end to what's going to pop up later. So, all right, man, let's go ahead and dive into some viral hit. We got chapters 56 through 60, and this is all pretty much just the flashback stuff with our boy Taihun, as uh, we understand what his problem is, what his tragic backstory is to make him a good guy at the end, right? The classic lookism writing we all love here, right? As well as how everyone, uh, everyone's really connected at the end of the day, too. I think it was really dope. Yeah, everybody fucking knows each other. Yes, sir. I would remind him of somebody. Man, the, this this whole arc, like, Doan did nothing wrong, and it, it's it's it sucks that it had to go the way it went. But it feels like it, it had to be something like this, this big, 
in order for like Taihun to actually change or something like that, or or to to be I guess less violent, even though he's still kind of a dick. It's out of love for uh, Yongji, the fucking uh, the student. Yeah. In like in like it's... some weird way, it's 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 crazy that like it it's it just shows how good a character like or how how um how much he's grown, how much he's matured, even though he's still a piece of shit. Yeah, that's the weird thing, right? Is that he still acts the same overall. But when he sees people like Hoban, who has the same personality as Doun, he's like, "All right, I guess this guy's cool. Let me let me hang out with him." And then you get people, and then you know it, it really is. This arc is just saying like, "Oh, Taihun gets a second chance to save somebody in this shitty situation where they're just constantly shadowed by their parents to study super hard, right?" But he's doing it in his own twist, right? Just to be an asshole from the front, so to try to be friendly yeah which i mean i guess it's just it has to be there for the conflict he's like he's like how bakugo is to fucking deku except less violent yeah ex- you know yes you that's exactly what it is i mean the big surprise out of this was with uh monk Seung kim showing up in this flashback and i was thinking like yeah. i know that name's familiar like this is a character we've seen and of course it is bomi's friend who works at the mma gym who is trained by Logan Gracie, who is probably the chicken head. And that threw me off because I'm just like, oh, so his cousin's just an asshole. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> that, that, yeah. That's, that's nuts. Like, he doesn't even want to do none of that. Which shows that, like, you know, it's nothing out of ill will. He's just He just wants to place to sleep. Uh, that whole thing was, uh, was pretty intricate. I would really say that with how this is playing out now, uh, seeing him go down the same path, I'm wondering, like, what the distinction was going to be between him and Doun. This guy already knows Kyoshin Karate. He's already good at it. Like, how the fuck did he, like, take the time to do that, you know, if he's always studying all the time? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's got to be something. Well, it's probably the same situation as Doun. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's probably like that. Like, you got to study and you got to do your studies and you got to you gotta practice your Kyokushin. <laughs> Or else you're not a good son and I'm not a good father. I was just going to say, we see that kind of thing on the surface. And that's, you know, that's part of what I'm talking about. But I mean, just mostly... Yeah, for sure. You know, just mostly, like, what the backstory is. Like, what the exposition is on, like, what he is and how he got to be that good at Kyoshin Karate. I think he's, like... Yeah, Adam had Adam had to be dumb and, and like, buy the 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 rest of them so i'm like don't say shit because like <laughs> i, I, I want to figure out what's going on right now i, I guess with what tyhoon's gonna do in the situation i think he's just gonna be an asshole for the most part and then you know start saying certain things that maybe will wake will wake this guy up i don't i, I don't remember his name Youngji. Youngji, yeah and i i guess that's just gonna be it i don't really know where else that's that part's gonna go but yeah, I don't really have much else to say about the flashback. I'm like, it's it's honestly just a standard flashback from from our author here, who's done Lookism, right? Like we we've seen similar stuff before, over in Lookism with his flashbacks. I do want to make a prediction before we move on, though. I think by the end yeah. of all of this, or somewhere during the middle of this, um, we're gonna find out that somebody in the group is also a prodigy, um, and I I'm gonna say it's gonna be, you know, best girl. Oh. I think that she just has like this inherent like fighter's ability to like master a lot of things but she's gonna have like that whole like that whole issue where you know like she can't fight in front of her friends she always has to do it like behind the scenes you know what I mean so she's always gonna have like that internal struggle where she's fighting by herself until she gets caught I'm pretty sure that's how you know, that's going to get turned down. Chuck Hall will get, get caught out by somebody else who had the idea to go out and fight alone rather than, um, you know, fight with, uh, with the group. But uh, I, I don't know. Like, if the prediction turns out to be true, I would kind of like for the story to pan out that way. I think it would be really cool for the, the story to kind of focus more on uh, Gaio too. Uh, just because, you know, with her, we get a lot of... Um, you get a lot of help and support towards Hoban, and uh, I always forget that. Part. And there's also a lot of mystery to her still. 
love that shit, dude. I love a best girl with mystery. Yeah. And she's not even an alien or anything magical or mysterious, you know? She's just, like, regular. She could be, and I'd be totally fine. I'd be I fine with it. Well, I mean, I, I think we know enough about her, though, right? Uh, she's, she knows who the fucking chicken face is, right? It's Logan Gracie. She she got trained by Logan Gracie. Yeah, but there, there was no, like, definitive, I guess, definitive statement saying that, like, that he, yeah, he does this weird fucking thing where he made YouTube videos and while putting on a chicken head, just because, just so nobody. Yeah, we're saying that Logan Gracie could be the chicken head, we don't have proof, but I mean, it's, it's, I feel like it's implied, uh, but when she was fighting the other girl. Look, man, I make assumptions, not implications, okay? No, but look, so when she's fighting, right, we're seeing her martial arts that she's using and then logan's talking to moonsong about uh the arm bar technique and all that stuff uh he said like yeah i trained this girl and then of course it's gonna cut next to gil doing that technique which yeah. you know is an author's way of saying like yeah this is the person that he trained and then you know we just know that she likes hoban and that uh she talks like an old man which is great uh there's something more to her See, I would, I would only say there would be if we didn't know her upbringing and her dad. If we didn't know that stuff, then yes, I would say there's probably a lot more going on with her. But I think that's pretty much it. I mean, do we know why exactly she learned to fight? Because I don't think that we do, right? We knew that she knows how to fight, and we know that she edited those videos. I can think that we can make the parallel or the connection, however you want to say it. Well, we don't know she edited those videos. She just knows those techniques. I think it's super fair to say that she edited those videos in exchange for him teaching her how to fight for whatever reason. If he's the chicken boy that Hoban's been learning from, then yeah, that would t that would fit in nicely. Well, again, I mean, I don't know what you would consider solid proof, but he did kidnap Hoban and he did say, hey... I know that nah, dude, I wanted it in writing. Like, no, Jerry, come on, no. Let me finish. He's like, I know <laughs> that you saw my video. I know that you learned my move. But I'm going to want you to tell me from your own mouth, where did you learn it? Yeah. So he, so he has a fucking thing about kidnapping little boys then. Because, like, if 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 he wanted to, if he was going to know, he wouldn't have to fucking kidnap him. Bro, he's like... He'd be like, where'd you learn those moves? Is, I mean, I think our... our th I think our... Yeah, our, our author Taijin here likes uh, uh, Tom Lee too much, I think. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I will never made that connection. <laughs> but yeah, man, unless it's like a huge twist with Logan Gracie and Gil, it's like maybe they, they actually, they didn't know each other. The chicken head's actually somebody completely different. Then we could get some more interesting stuff with her. But I think as far as what we need from her, we have enough. You know, eventually we're going to get that arc where she's going to realize, like, oh, I'm never going to, you know, be able to date Hoban. Uh, I'm going to go be sad and go do this thing. You know, that, I think that's the only thing going for her right now. Aside from, you know, all the slice of life stuff that's going on with the, the crew. I, I think I'm an asshole. Well, I know I'm an asshole because I'm laughing as I'm thinking about this, but... You know, like I like I want her to have what she wants. Don't get me wrong. I don't even think that Hoban deserves her because she's just obviously best girl. But if she had to have what she wanted, if she really wanted Hoban. I don't imagine that by the end of the series, a certain girl probably gets into some sort of car accident, MMA accident, some sort of accident, not so accident, accident. Just choose your pick, and you know ends up dying, and then you know maybe. Just doesn't end up having a choice but to go for you know, Gail. So, yeah, Bomi has to die so Gil could uh, <laughs> come in. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's that's the thing with series like this, is that there's always the one girl. Um, and then eventually they're going to have to sit them down and be like, yeah, sorry, we just can't. We're not doing this. Like another webtoon I read, like, was it a while back, uh, back on the manga reviews, uh, Girl the Wilds. It was like that, too, uh, where, you know, there is the main girl, the main character knows, and it's like, oh, it's pretty obvious that's going to happen. But here's this other girl who is best girl, and she's trying her best to try to slide into those DMs, and he's just like, yeah, I mean, you're a cool friend. And she's like, what the fuck, you know? So, <laughs> um, 
So I I hope all I hope is that it's sooner than later because when you start dragging stuff out like that, it's never the best. And plus, you're just like, yeah, let's have Gil move on so that way she could get better things going on. Flashback stuff was all right. It's kind of what, as I was reading it, I'm like, yeah, I could see where this is going. Though I did not expect Doan to die. I guess I should have because we don't see that character prior to the flashbacks. But uh, uh, there's just something about seeing him lying there. I'm like, oh, he's dead. Oh, yeah. we're, we're hitting this territory. All right. Okay, before we move on, now that I now that you made me remember, again, and I'm gonna bring this up as many fucking times as I fucking want. <laughs> these fucking tattoos, man. You expect me to believe that these guys were at most 14 years old? Are you fucking kidding me? These grown Dude, ass Chang Jiang is a gangster. These grown ass <laughs> men who ride fucking motorcycles, literal fucking street bikes around town. He's got a fucking sleeves just tatted yes, up sir. everywhere. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm only 14, bro. Like, I barely grew pubes last summer. Oh yeah, some Tattoo! Fucking bullshit. Wait, huh? No, those niggas were 18. Like, 16. <laughs> okay, but come on. I'm sorry. That was the but that come on. That's just too much. All right, that was my complaint. <laughs> Look, I like I, like I said before, man. This guy loves tattoos because we're never not gonna see them. You gotta also complain. They're like six three. They're all buff. Is this what? Yeah, you know what? This is what I saw. Other people that are bigger than me when I was little. So does this make sense? I mean, it's like Jotaro, right? In the beginning of part three. Jesus, right? Like, look at this child smoking a cigarette in jail, drinking beer. Let, let me have the psychological fortitude to fucking pull this trigger to my head, knowing full well, having the full confidence that something's going to stop it. That shit is nuts. He's like, no, mom, look. <laughs> Not scarred at all, doing the same shit you do Just every fucking day, the letters. day after. Write some letters, bro. <laughs> Just write some letters to the governor, dude. Just tell him to let you out. Be like, nope, no death penalty for me, governor. At, at least with Typhoon, it's like, it, it's it's see, it's you could fucking, you could kind, you could kind of choose the fucking school bully in your fucking head, and then it, it'll match the description. But it's like, like he hasn't killed anybody, as, as we know. He looks like he would, but it's like, it's not yeah, until yeah. this happens where it's where he's kind of pulled, pushed himself. Did he end up go to juvie? I don't, I don't remember reading that. No, it just the the flashback just ends uh, him beating the shit out of those guys, and then going but, to present day. But that um, guy's dead, though, isn't he? Doan. No, no, yeah, Doan is dead, but the fucking dude the, with the spike and the spiky hair and the fucking... Oh, the I mean, cousin? The tattoos, you know, yeah. As far as you know, they were just mortally wounded. It doesn't really... It didn't, he didn't really... That dude, that dude was laying face down in the gutter with blood going... His own blood going in the gutter. Okay, then you have he's, to, not, he's not dead, bro. To, <laughs> son of a bitch, Tai Hoon. Some... <laughs> okay, then you have to assume that if that was the case, then Tai Hoon is also a juvenile delinquent and has... Also, got her away scot free for murdering five kids at once. Okay. Yeah, but they're but they're bad kids. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter because he was of age and he could have gotten away with doing it, which he did. So you know, I just I just let's just change the wiki really quick and be like, yeah, he's just he just murdered five kids and got away with it when he was fourteen. I, I would think like because if I saw that dude again, I'd be surprised. I'd be shocked. Oh, okay, I would be shocked. But at the same time, the fact that let's say he didn't like fucking kill the dude, uh, that that would just show that Taihoon, uh, as much of an asshole as he is, he he doesn't go that far. He'll just like mortally wound somebody, but he won't like kill them. Yeah, that's the thing with Taihoon, right? It's like, hey, I'm an asshole, but I'm a good guy. Yeah, but I have standards. After this whole flashback arc with Taihoon, it, it's kind of that might be the case. Maybe he's like softened like really hard. Otherwise, he really would have like killed him. 
I, I, at the same time, I don't see Taihoon killing anybody, even if he did, if he never met, like, Dowoon. Like, I, I feel like he'd just be a nuisance. Yeah, I no, mean, he's, no, you know, nothing he's fatal. Just... Yeah. Can I, can I just add really quick, how fucking sad was it when we actually learned the real reason why he asked, does anybody have 500 won? Mm -hmm. like, holy yeah. shit, that really, like, that hit me right in my feels, and I was like, bro. I'm gonna cry every single time somebody asks me that. Yeah, he's been the, uh, what's the what's the what's the author or the man man waka? I don't think that's how it goes, but uh, it's um, yeah, Taijun. Yeah, Taijun. Like he's he's been on point with like the ending of the chapters, ending chapters at the right the right spots. Because mm -hmm. you, you know how he's, he's been fucking consist consistently putting out this content like it, it's it's is i would i would i would think it's be it'd be kind of difficult to um end the chapter at the right spot when you have like pretty much the ending of like the next two arcs in your head already because this one's already completed and you're working on a different series as well that you're drawing right so it's like good good on good on taijun for for fucking like knowing when to, when to cut the chapter Knowing when the, the next plot or the next, I guess, paragraph of information comes in. Like, not giving us all at once. Like, I feel like Tower of God does that a lot. Where he's like, yeah, you just read all this information real quick and here's the next next piece. Did you remember what I told you in the middle? <laughs> well, you're yeah, that's exactly how I felt with the Hasracha back stuff in Tower. I was like, I just don't yeah. want to read this. Yeah. You're like, why? <laughs> mm -hmm. it, yeah. for, for, for the sound of like dude like going back to the tower it sounded like his people were a bunch of uh well well i can't say that because uh, years after being given everything I, I guess i would do that to people like imagine if jesus was still alive imagine if jesus was alive and then just like granting wishes <laughs> yeah house raja sort of got twisted into his perspective on things and that, that's that's yeah. what led to his downfall with with his people, the whatever they were called, or I actually want to see this fight in length with Taijun or Taihun, excuse me. I want to see this Taekwondo versus Kyokushin, man. Yeah, I want to see what the all the, all the fuss is about. Mm -hmm. Who's better? Honestly, I, I I think so too. Dude, all that repressed anger from studying is just gonna just pop off all at once. You, yeah, and you already know. Yeah. Yeah, rage drive at startup, dude. That's <laughs> exactly what's gonna happen. That's gonna be cool. I wonder how the the outcome with these characters is gonna influence the story. Right? Because this guy is part of the, the big... What, I guess with the big five, I guess, that Hoban is trying to... The, the place Hoban was gonna go to but decided not to because it's like, oh, he's an asshole. Let's not go over there. And let's try to take him down. So I wonder if this change of heart he's going to have is going to change things with that situation. I feel like it should, right? Because this is such a big deal right now in the story. So I'm hoping for that. I'm looking forward to Viral Hit as always. So with that, we could dive into some lookism, dude. Probably my highlight for these uh, series here as we're in Workers chapters 10 through 12. And man. Man, oh man. There's some shit We're, happening. There's there's shit happening, man. Classic stuff. There's Kyle, not even Kyle can like anime <laughs> bullshit kicking in now. More backstories with characters, man, that I wasn't expecting. Like I was, <laughs> there was that one page, or I guess that one panel. I'm sure you guys know where I looked, and I'm like, ah, oh, Zhao Long, my boy. I feel so bad for you, man. Fuck yeah. Oh my god, like. Leave it to fucking Samuel just to, like, shit on somebody while they're already fucking par paralyzed, dude. And he's doing the lookism face and everything, yeah. He's like, I can't hold it back! <laughs> fucking. He's like, I lied to you. <laughs> and boy, when, like, <laughs> fucking Jake and Sam... Fuck, man. Jake and Samuel just met up with each other again. Like, he just caught, caught him taking Vivi away. He's like, yo, I need her here. And he's like, I don't think that's gonna happen. And he's like, tell me something. 
Why is it always like this when we see each other? <laughs> and it's just the same fucking uh, the same one when they first met each other in the in the beginning of the arc of workers versus big deal. It's just how we yeah. so good. It, it's just it, dude, it's just like I, I was it was telling you guys earlier it's just goo and and gun. Like it's it's just the beginning of what of them since fucking Jake already supposedly surpassed gun because of that fucking prison guard said so. <laughs> It's still not enough to equate to the power of Daniel Ultra Instinct. Right? TM. Yeah. TM. TM. I, I, it, it's, it doesn't matter. It, it's, Words don't matter when it comes to this series. No. Really <laughs> I'll say this, man. They really built up J. Kim in this one, in these chapters, uh, which I didn't mind in the fight. With Zhao Lung, I was like, "Oh, this is cool. We could finally see what what Juvie did to Jake Kim, like how strong he is now, and he gets purple eyes, which is that's cool." He gets the Mangekyo, um, bro. Yeah, but then, <laughs> but then coming in and saying like, "No, Jake Kim is stronger than Gun. If they're gonna fight, he's gonna win." Like that's yeah, like, that's that's what they're saying. But I will say. That was Gun in Juvie. It's been years since he's been there. Yeah, so that's true. you know he and plus he probably didn't have Ultra Instinct TM uh, and, and, on there. And plus, like the the fucking the amount of blood on the wall is definitely like a sure sign of somebody who's strong. Like if somebody's blood blood stain on the wall is bigger than the other, then they're stronger. Like that's that's a fact for sure. Like that prison guard has been there for years. I, I you know what I'm half sarcastic because it's like well Jake's ended I up being know. bigger <laughs> at the end. Yeah, it did, but it, like like yeah. you said, like Gun Gun has just kept improving. He's been out, but I, I'm not sure if yeah, like you said, like I'm not sure if his personality's changed if he's gotten softer because it feels like Goo is like it feels between Gun and Goo. I feel like Goo would do some sh- stupid damage. I mean, Gun would do some fucking stupid dumb damage, but Goo would kind of. I think overall take it just because of more ruthless. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't Goo getting ready to retire from this stuff? Like he's he's looking for a successor, right? Like him and Goo. No, Gun, that's the big Gun thing right now. No, that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Gun. Yeah, Gun. Gun wants to retire, right? Well, because they both have to look for people to take over, because they're going to be legal adults. <laughs> Whoops, and uh, you can't have that. But see, no, but the they, they can't be doing what they're Goo. doing. I think they both have the same objective. Actually, they're not. They're technically yeah. retiring because they want to be promoted. Because they, they into the adult world stuff. Yeah. Well, they're basically behind Cho. So, like, in order of succession, it's Cho, then Gun and Goo, then like the basically the the leaders of the, the four gangs, and then so forth and so forth. Like, basically, Gun and Goo again. They want to control Mr. Cho's empire, and he's like, okay, you guys just have to buy me out. And they're both racing to see which one of them can get, like, I think it's like one billion won or a hundred million, a hundred billion won or something like that. I don't remember how much it is. But it's like, yeah. But he's trying to come up with that, and it's just like, you know the rules. It's like 400,000. Yeah, something like that. And it's like, you know the rules. It's like, you know, you have to bring me this allotted amount of month minimum. Uh, however you do it, just don't get caught doing anything illegal, blah, blah, blah. And, he, you know, they just pass those rules along down to the gangs, so forth and so forth. Um, I think that, uh, just in regards to what's happening, uh, I do feel bad for, uh, what is it, Shao, Shao Lung, whatever his name is. Shao Lung, yeah. I, I'm not going to lie, the backstory... It wasn't really that pertinent, but at the same time, I do feel bad for him. Just because it's just like, of course you were going to catch feelings for this girl. Like, somehow you ended up being smaller than her when you met, but then you ended up being, like, taller than her and older than her somehow. So, again, totally surprised to me, but whatever. Uh, and then you chopped your dick off. Just so yep. you could be with her, dog. I mean, I will say, yeah, I wasn't expecting to get more flashback with 
Xiao Long, I thought it was fine with what we got last time. But then adding the extra layer, I think was mainly for that final scene with between him and Vivi before Samuel K came in. Because that really shows even more desperation and with Xiao Long, and that's why he started barking or started woofing. And, you know, and I don't know about Yosuke, but I was, thinking, I was thinking of Chainsaw Man when I saw that. I'm like, wait, are we, are we shitposting in here with the wolves, dude? He's like, is who about to come in? Who, is who, is who, person about to come in? Who I think is about to come in? Yeah. But yeah, I think it was to make it more emotionally heavy and, um, and also to understand maybe Jake's, um, pers uh, Jake's side of it, right? Because he kept giving Zhao Long chances like dude I don't want to do this to you man you may never oh, walk yeah. again right and then plus the stuff we got with Jay Kim in this chap in these chapters right saying how it's like he was just like I've been putting on this fake smile the whole time you know I just I, I don't want to do this stuff like I just want to get Sinu and then just go back to the happy times yeah yeah I was I was really digging these chapters man that Elon that Eli uh Johan fight which Ended a little too short for me, man, not gonna lie. Uh, but it's like, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, it's like, oh, you know, dad mode kicked in. Gotta, gotta tap out. I don't think that there's any particular reason why that um, the other Daniel's body has his Ultra Instinct on. I just think that maybe, like... Uh, oh, I think I know why. I think, what is his name? James Lee? I think James Lee. No, that, that's, what you, that's what you think. That's what I think, yeah. I think James yeah. Lee is like, uh, like subconsciously wake, like awakened. No, I just think, I think it's the body uh, is just is just triggering because now that this is the first, well, yeah, this is the first time Daniel can't go back to that body since he unlocked his Ultra Instinct stuff, right? So it's. To me, it's like, oh, it's on auto mode right now because Daniel can't go back in. And he was trying to get in. You know, he was getting into the fights before he got knocked out and, you know, went uh, inhaled all those mushroom fumes. Uh, so I just think it's the body just going on autopilot. Mushroom and, and you know, fumes. The, yeah. <laughs> you know what else I think it could be? Now that you bring up, like, the kind of like the limitations thing, I totally forgot that there were rules that he had for the body. And I think that. And just bear with me here. I think that if Daniel stays. Oh, you lost me. Fuck. I think that I'm if just Daniel kidding. stays uh, in a skinny body or a healthy body for, for a little too long, then he's not going to be able to use the other Daniel. Uh. I, mean, I thought of that too. Like, yeah, like that's no it's the, the only rule is uh he can only be in one body at a time so far i'm just saying it might be something that they add to it well i mean yeah he could only be in one body at a time and then if something happens like when he fell out of the building and that body just can't wake up it's in a coma then he can't go back in it that's the only thing that we know about it um which is why he couldn't go into this one, right? Because he's just he's just D E D on the mushrooms, buddy. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, so this will be interesting, man. Seeing Daniel versus Daniel. Uh, well, actually, it'll probably be Daniel, Jake, and Samuel versus Daniel, because. You know, this Ultra Instinct unconscious version of Daniel was, you know, kicking Gun's ass, broke his arm. So it's going to take more than just one of these boys to try to calm him down. I'm actually I'm actually more interested in the aftermath. Like what happens if Ultra Instinct turns off? Is, is Daniel going to swap bodies or is he just or is that body just going to knock out? I'm I'm expecting that like I'm expecting like like uh real Daniel just to like pass out any moment and then like Daniel Park sexy Daniel Park just wake up and just like <gasps> like standing up or something. Mhm. Mm Some somehow maybe like during a during a fight. Like when uh, 
like when Daniel's probably fight it, like when uh, Ultra Instinct is fighting uh, J. Kim and uh, Samuel, maybe like he just switches back all of a sudden they end up just fighting him. And he's like, wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. And Samuel just keeps going. And so does Jake because, I don't know. Jake is trying to do shit. I, I don't know how, how you would feel about somebody stopping a fight or the person he's fighting trying to stop the fight. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. Um, and another note for the Daniel thing was, man, it was it was great pacing for the reveal, right? Because I was like, oh yeah, there's a guy who's unconscious in that room. I'm like, oh, that's obviously Daniel's body. But then when you see Daniel flying into the hallway, I was like, oh, who is there? Who's showing up out of nowhere? And then it's Daniel. I'm like, dude, no fucking way. You know what's gonna happen? Yeah. You know, you know who's gonna. Yeah, Dude. I think I, I think do. <laughs> Remember he's up there too. Fuck yeah, bro. Ready, bro. Fucking do about to come in and handle you know business. What? Uh, I'm a, I'm gonna write that down, dude. <laughs> Fucking do. Man, you know what we might actually see is yeah, our boys are going to struggle with Ultra Instinct Daniel and that's when uh Johan pops in. Because he's there for Vivi, right? He has to get to that top floor. And then, you know, because it's on autopilot, he's like, oh, new guy? Or I'm going to fight him, and we're going to see that fight. Dude, he's going to beat Sam. Who, Daniel? Yeah. I don't... Like, I think somehow Vivi might get taken. I think that might be happening for sure. Uh, probably not before Johan gets what he wants. But yeah, Sam is definitely going to get his ass beat. Hey, well, why was Sa- fucking? You see how comfortable Samuel got when he got in the chopper, though. <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> two seconds he was already fucking trying to get naked in, a, in the fucking chopper. Yeah, they told him like, "Hey, you do this thing, man. We'll make you the new leader of Third Affiliates." He's just like, "I'm in my briefs. My shirt's about to get ripped <laughs> off because of how intense I am." Fucking yeah. hard my nipples are, dude. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I'm so ready for this promotion. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dog. Who, who was yeah. he? He was talking to what it was supposed supposedly James Lee. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. James Lee. Uh, he was talking to some, yeah, fucking the the, the yeah the guy the guy leader. that um the guy yeah, that uh don't with the pants. The leader of workers. Yeah. Yeah, the one that was in the flashback. And that's the, the like that's the only guy he speaks like formally to. And everybody else, he's kind of like. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Fucking Joker status, like we live in a society. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's the only respect he has. So I'm like, who the fuck is this dude? Yeah, well, isn't that a President Choice friend, right from the flashback? Yeah. Yeah, Tom Lee. It was it was great to see Tom Lee just be him, and the fact that he was hanging out with Yena too, <laughs> just being Uncle Tom. Oh, that was fun stuff. Yeah, how did you guys feel? About, like, he was training Eli before Gun showed up. That's why he, like, uh, he, it would have been a different story if, if Yena hadn't, like, shit her pants. So it's like, I feel like Eli is still, like, like, okay, like, like who's, I don't know who said it, I think it was Johan, or it, it could have been somebody else, but, like, when he was about to fight him and, he was somebody was telling him how soft he's gotten because of the kid and the life and shit and he used to be a beast who I don't know I forgot who was it, who said it, who was it who said it that I was think Tom. It, Tom was it Tom or was it yeah because Tom trained Eli before Eli even had kids or had his kid he's saying that he's beating the shit out of him. yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah I remember that yeah yeah wait that, that I think that is a factor as well. So Eli might not be... He's still pretty vicious, but he might not be the strongest. Um, he might have been once before. Same thing with Gun. Gun could be like... Gun is like just looking to wind down. And I guess Goo is too, but that's just Goo. That's his own fucking personality. No, I, I think Goo just wants to keep going. I think that's the difference between him and... Uh, oh, yeah? And Gun. Yeah. yeah. 
good. Yeah, so so that he's not. I'm not gonna say he's not manly. I'm just saying he doesn't do things in a manly way. Like he, yeah, he, if you had to like, he's crafty. If you had to compare like apples to oranges, like Gun is Kiryu, Gu is Majima. That's the way. I would say. No. Uh, I mean, Majima is also very manly too, in a way. But I, I think, well, at the surface level, I would agree with that. But as you get more into Majima's character, I don't think he's nothing like Goo at all. Okay, this is what I would tell you. Uh, Goo is what Majima is to Kiryu during Yakuza. Yakuza Kiwami. Just like the way that you encounter him, the way that he like does like all these underhanded things. Just get oh, just a Majima everywhere shit? Yeah, just Majima everywhere. Uh, like, that's Goo, basically. Not, mm. not like the embodiment of like him just fucking around, just being like, just he's basically like uh, chaotic. What is it? Yeah, I, I see it in a way that it's like it's everything he's doing is kind of a selfish need, like like Majima does. Uh, all Majima wants to do is just fight Kiryu. Yeah, basically. Um, he's, I kind of see it. He's chaotic, man. He's he's on that side of the. You know, yeah, he's chaotic evil for sure. Chaotic evil. Yeah, thank you. But that's not Majima though. That's not Majima. No, that's not Majima. Yeah. he's chaotic. He's chaotic good. No, he'd be, um, in Yakuza, I would say minor Yakuza, um, bosses that Kiryu has to fight that don't pop up again. They their similarities with them and Goo. Yeah, um, like, like, imagine if Goo was, like, the, so you, so you have your, your little fodder enemies that are just, and then you have, like, the, the little top, the, the more, the higher ones that have, like, a ego to them. Imagine if Goo just, like, his personality was stuck there. But then his his skills just kept progressing after that. So basically, uh, Goo would be like a very like showy, proud, prideful version of like the kung fu assassin that follows you throughout the game. You know, like I don't know, man. I just know he likes he, he's in a Gucci and all that shit. There's a character. There's a character I know. Very bougie. That matches. That matches Goo, but both of you guys haven't met him yet in Yakuza, so I'm not going to say. Yeah, don't even. Don't you fucking dare. Anywho, back to Lookism. I, what were we talking about? Yeah, it's just another case of everyone knows each other with uh, with Tom Lee and Eli. Which is something I, I really wouldn't have expected, because you know, none of that was even hinted. Probably wasn't hinted in the uh, flashback stuff with Eli. Yeah, but yeah, so he trains for a month with Tom Lee, and then now he's getting these green glowing eyes, which, uh, I guess this is just their ultra instincts, man. That, that I guess that's just what it is. Yeah, it's their Yeah, it reminds me of, uh, in Kuroko's Basket, there's, you know, that's a basketball manga, and they, they talk about, like, oh, here's the zone that the players can enter, and it's like, it's a whole different realm of the sport, and it's like their eyes glow, and it's just like they're uh, like they're unmatched with everybody else. And I think that, that that's what it feels like here. It's just like, oh, they're entering this state of being to where they're just like, oh, we're going to fight, and we're going to fight hard. They're going to take it to Mortal Kombat. Basically. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's I think it's neat. I can't wait to see what color everyone's eyes are. I have a feeling that Zacks are either going to be blue or red. Or maybe if he's special and even more useless, he'll have two eye colors. <laughs> um, Damn. I hope, I hope that they give uh, Mira uh, an eye color. Uh, <laughs> she can be the pink one just for, you know, continuity, I guess. So, like, whatever. Um... No, but I I think that um you know where we're at right now like shit is definitely about to pop off. Um, I do think like high key though like don't sleep on Dooley. Like Dooley will come out of nowhere and will surprise the fuck out of us. Like he's gonna probably <laughs> knock out Daniel. Like as everyone's like literally getting their asses handed to him, Dooley like might come out of nowhere and like drop like the fire hydrant on the back of his head. You know, like who knows. 
Like, but I definitely just say, like, don't throw that shit out there, because... And I uh, just gotta say again, man, like, I guess Lookism's doing really good now, huh? Because we're still getting music, and the music's still changing. So that's pretty cool, dude. Yeah, I was a fan of these last two chapters. It was pretty good. Mm-hmm. I thought, uh, music, the music was bumping. Got me hype. It was like the, like, on some second shit, like, high key. Yeah. Yes. I mean, the way these guys fight, if it looks and feels like Tekken. Just the, just the way those exchanges go, right, with uh, Jake and, uh, and uh, what if I say Sinu, fucking Samuel. Like, the way they clash is just like, oh yeah, that's intense. You could feel that from here. Just like in Tekken. So right on, man, let's go ahead and hop into Gata High School, chapters 517 and 518. And, yeah, I don't have a lot to say here either. It's more of just what we've already... We, we've seen a lot of this stuff, right? Mainly with Mubong coming in and just acting like Mubong always has in the series. Just an asshole. Do not defy me. Yeah, a lot of stuff happened here, man. He's trying to blow up the earth. People are dying. And I told Jerry before we start recording, recording that uh, I think there could be time travel or some bullshit in here because... We're seeing important characters die again, and I'm like, you, there, we just, we just can't have that. I don't think to end to end the series on a good note at the end of this. I think they have to come back, uh, especially like, come on, like King Uma, like she can't be gone like that. What does she do? She just put a, a baseball bat in the ground and, and said then, stop. And then you have, um, fucking, I always forget her name, but you know, Ungio, you know the 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 one who who who. The more she uses her power, the more she, I mean, the more she opens the gates, the the more she like regresses in age. Like she died. you have her, you yeah, she died, but but like Mubang is using her, like her spirit to, um, I guess melt or destroy the I forgot what it was to melt or destroy the world together. Yeah, he's trying to destroy the world while he's creating the new one. Yeah. That's right next to it. Yeah. So, and because it's, of that... It's like Gaia, basically. Yeah, yeah and you, you have and you have King Uma just, like, trying to talk to her, like, telling her to wake up, and if this is really what you're meant to do, or if this is, yeah, if this is what you're meant to do just to help, like, move on, do this heinous bullshit, and she's still kind of, like... I don't know if I don't know if the panel showed her like asleep or if she was just unconscious. I feel like that. Yeah, it's just it's more of like the subconsciousness of her. Like it's just her powers, really. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just saying like, oh, look at your descendants are resisting. Like, okay, let's go deal with that, right? And of course, one of them's Uma. And um, you know, the, I was disappointed with Uma. Like, it's great that we saw her. But the fact that we didn't see her fight with the rabbit, and it's just like, oh, where did she go? She ran away, and it's like we didn't get to see that. Oh, she's Come like, on, she was winning too. I was like, winning how? Right. Yeah, and especially when they all popped up behind Mubong and they all look fine, right? Which, which I actually might get into some other stuff because uh, homeboy uh, Ryong, right, who is probably dead, right? Well, he's, like he's, it's just he's his body's just dead. moving. Yeah, he said he was dead, and they just yeah. animated so. Yeah, yeah. That, I feel that like that—that that like, was oh, Mubong's like controlling his body, probably. Yeah, or brought him back. It, 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 uh, it's like he's—he's he's God. He's already doing all everything at like once. So just to see, I, I feel like it—it it shouldn't be surprising to see like somebody who fucking who went down already, especially one of his allies quote unquote um it it's it's possible that he maybe like just brought did bring him back like like what do you mean control his body like use it for himself think, or bring him back by his control cuz the the way it was drawn was he stood back up and his face is just expressionless oh yeah, like he's okay. still dead his body's just like well, and like, and the fact that yeah, he's still missing a chunk of his body, and that he just goes right behind Mubong with the other guardians. But I think what it is is it's just like the horse part of him doing its job. Like whether I'm dead or not, I'm 
gonna get you there because you're a descendant. You're like I'm like supposed to protect you. You know. No, he's no Mubong's not a, de a descendant. No, but like, okay, yes, I do understand that he's not a descendant, but the tenacity that he had towards the descendant, whatever her name was, right? And then once he became a dragon, right, he had basically display that same tenacity towards God by slaying all the dragons, all of his kin folk, right, except for his dad. Hmm. But my, like, right. my point is, like, he's still trying to, like, maintain that tenacity even though he's dead. Like, he's not there. I, I do believe that. I just think that his body is enacting on its own. Like, mm. I don't know if they've ever pulled that shit in any other series. But, like, I can just think of... But I feel like, I feel like if that's the case, then he would have still been fighting Dawe before Mubong showed up. I, right, like he would have gotten immediately back up and still try to fight, especially if Mubong was there, right? But like in the presence of like the thing like you're supposed to protect, I just felt like that might have like pushed it to do that. Otherwise, mm. like it would have probably just stood there for a while, you know, like just getting beat, but then getting back up again, you know, like an immortal, like an immortal enemy. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still betting that yeah, Mubong's controlling his body or something. Oh, you know what? It it didn't click until these chapters when uh, Mujin or Mubong was explaining stuff, talking about the prophecy and all that. And, the, and it didn't click. And I was thinking like, oh, when he's explaining like, oh, he's not. He's explaining the prophecy thinking it's him, but it it's probably Mori, I think. No, it's probably or his the son. Or his kid. Yeah. Just do or his, well, because remember, there's, there's the part where he says... Um, what is it? The the red wings or something? Yeah, in, uh, in his back, and then that made me think of well, wait, well, when Mori's gonna fight, he's gonna have these power poles behind him rotating, right? And one of them is obviously red. I think it was red because that was that dragon's bone with its own soul. He's probably gonna have more than one red one because there are gonna be more dragons with souls once he. Yeah. Comes, yeah. Once he learns how to pick them all up and all that other stuff, and then the other thing that I can assume uh, is that even though that Mujung has those red wings, and that you know Mori has those rings, I'm more inclined to believe that it's more or less this kid, and this kid is probably going to have his own set of wings, red, you know, and this this is probably what they meant by like the true like person who's going to come in. I was like, I saw my girl, uh, uh, what's her name? Fuck. <laughs> She's not my girl. I can't remember. Her. Uh, <laughs> Maury's sister? Yeah, Maury's sister. Uh, Ahan? Ahan? Yeah. Ahan. Yeah. Woo! Ahan, yeah. Woo! Saved it. Anyway. Uh, yeah, well, my girl, Ahan, you know, she was in danger. Trying to hold on to the, you know, to the baby. And then all you can see is, like, the, the eyelids kind of waking up and, like, that full-on power with that black silver. Like, it honestly gave me, like, really bad JoJo vibes. I don't know about you. I was like, that whole baby. Oh, right with the now, green baby? Yeah, like that. No, that whole baby. <laughs> was fucking and I was like, oh, that whole, the whole thing is the black silhouette except for the eyelids? I was like, no, no, not the green baby. <laughs> not the green baby. Okay. <laughs> oh, fucking JoJo, man. Like, I'm just going to say this again about M Mubong's baby. It's. <laughs> what not even what, how how many weeks is it again like six weeks in you know and Damn, the world's been ending for six weeks like i like i said earlier man i guess this is anime stuff so i can't expect uh move on has been trying to fucking talk with gaia for like four of those weeks no no the baby was six weeks in uh not q who who was it not you executive t P? The waifu? What, what the f? P? P, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was like six weeks pregnant before she died. She wasn't And the baby was born, pregnant. and that's when, that's when Mubong fucking. That pregnant, that, that, basic, that baby was basically due by the time that she was. Um... No. <laughs> yeah. What? Was like, what the she hell? wasn't even showing. She was on her third tr no, she was she was not on her third trimester. She was she was barely in her first. What are you talking about? Okay, yeah, I, I'm gonna have to wait until they put some dates on that. 
<laughs> no, they did. Did they? Yes, when she talked to the doctor, he said how many weeks she was pregnant. And then it was shortly after when everything hit the fan and then eventually she died. And then they took the baby out of her. And remember, I've said it multiple times in these episodes. I'm like, yeah, they, they took out the... Like, you agreed with me, Oscar. Like, they took out this fetus that didn't even fully develop yet. And that's another thing about this JoJo baby, man. This baby can just develop it itself. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Like some wet. Well, I mean, as we, I guess, as we find out in in these chapters that it actually is a Generation X baby, right? As we're getting all these, the the what is it, the resonance? Mm-hmm. Well, it's a very unique one considering that it could already use its powers from infancy. You know, because it it yeah. uses its power immediately, and like evidently, like all the generic Generation X things were just like talking to it for wherever the hell. Yeah, I woke up Dean, and he's like, "Who? Where am I?" Which, by the way, yeah. where is he? He, he, would die. he? he was deaded, and I guess the baby brought him back. Yeah, if you remember, he was with uh, uh, Sujin. Yeah, we were, we, we, were kinda co- we were, we were kind of confused on, on what happened to him exactly. Um, but apparently yeah, with the we, hole in his chest, apparently he did get, get the get Because we, we didn't see him die the same way we saw Sujin died. Yeah. Yeah, so we just, I, uh, I don't know then if he died then or not. Like he could have just been, or is that just the uh, Gen X realm of consciousness where they all go? <laughs> See, that's believable though, right? Because remember he, uh, remember when he absorbs the powers of uh, that asshole in the team that died when they fought, um, yeah, uh, Dusik, yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe that's where he is. He's using his time powers evolved. Plus the dimension hopping thing. Man, I forgot Dusik was a character. God, rest in peace. This shit don't even matter anymore. What did he die? He didn't you, die. I, don't, I don't even. I don't think he died. Well, I mean, on on screen. Yeah, let's just say that because at this point it's just like say <laughs> I just remember him having a really hard time with somebody, and then. Well, the last thing it. we the last thing we saw was. After he fought the Gen X kids, uh, that's when shit started popping off, and he's like, "Okay, I'll go fight again." And oh, he fought Mujin. Did he? Yep. He and then Mujin, Mujin killed him. Um, I think if I remember, that's a... they they were fighting like outside of a convoy, and this is where he like tries to um, kill Mujin like right then and there. And I think like he what he does is he weakens him, and then he gets like everyone to shoot at him or some shit like that. I don't exactly remember. But I don't think that he died that way. I think what happened is Mujin ended up getting away, and that Dusik Kim ended up um, going back. Because I remember that he had that kid with him some more, and that they were around roaming around the city, basically providing protection under under um, what's his face's uh, area, uh, Mori's area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that, as far as we know. You know, like the last known location we knew for him was under under Mori's area, like doing more of his lone trucking thing. I don't think, yeah, I don't think we got an on-screen death with him. To be fair, he doesn't have any powers, right? He's just punched good, and he, you know, he, he turns into Wolverine when he hits a certain HP point. So he's not really the most useful character right now. Kind of miss when it was like that, though. When it was just humans being humans instead of gods just killing the world. You mean back when there were tournaments? Yeah. Back when there was a high school? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I I should have expected it. I, I don't know why I didn't think of it, but seeing um, uh, Mira pop up was nice. Uh, yeah, I wonder what happened to the, the deer guy he, he was during there. that no, he's fight. There. I know, I know, yeah, that, I know he's there, but she showed like she kind of just showed up in front of, in front of uh, Daiwi when he was about to fucking eat it. Yeah, that's what sucks about these chapters, man. Is we didn't get to see those fights. We probably won't because we're just gonna be moving forward. Yeah, yeah, for real. Like I hope, I hope it don't bring. I the only time travel I hope happens is when they push, when they push Y to rewind, and then just like take Mubong out like at at that point. Uh, that might be it. 
they might go all the way back <laughs> to the beginning where they first meet him and then he's like yeah fuck this guy I'm not chapter doing it. chapter one baby oh well it's either time travel or mori gets gaia's powers and just resurrects everybody did you guys think that panel where it showed to Gotha, does that imply that like he's gonna be waking up soon? I don't I think you can't define waking up. I think that he's already awake. I think that what it oh, is stop. is stop with your Buddha. Lose, he's gonna lose control. Tagatha's already awake. He's just waiting for Mujin to lose control of his own power. Yeah, he be, he been woke. Yeah, that yeah, that that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's just waiting for him to take control, but um I don't know. I mean, I mean, I am interested to see how this is gonna turn out. Because even Sagatha is just kind of like waiting on the back end. Like, what are you gonna do, man? Like, uh, your back's kind of like going in corners now. You know? I don't know. I don't. I don't really feel like no matter what happens, the story is gonna progress until we just see Mori. Until Mori pops like, up. Yep. We're, we're really at that point where this is basically Ichigo versus Aizen. And just waiting for Ichigo to finally ex- accept um, uh, that that hollow version of Ichigo as the true version of himself. You know? Well, no, this is like when Urahara shows up, finally pulls out his bankai, right, and then Aizen's just like, "I'm the biggest bad," and then here comes Ichigo, right, with his final Getsuga technique that he pulls out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I will admit though. The, my favorite part was probably with Daiwei, just being Daiwei when he's talking to Mubong. Fucking great. He's like, oh, you think you're just some hot shit because you woke up to me? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> he's just pulling apart three, bro. Like, if he doesn't do a Karu and Dio walk exchange, like, what kind of man is he? Like, can't beat the shit out of you without getting closer. Exactly. That, that was so good. They got a high school version, not the JoJo. I mean, they're both good, but, like, this one was just as good as, like, why are you so mad? Oh, like all, all the like all the punches. Yeah, too? dude. Hell yeah! I don't need no auras, dude. I just need a good, fucking strong impact, and then a follow up to that impact. By either party, if, I, if it's by the one getting hit, fucking excellent, dude. And if it's just like a chain of each of them like hitting each other back and forth, like I, I fucking I I don't know if you saw that fucking video I, I sent I, Danny with the fucking uh, Metal Gear Solid Four thing, but it's like. Th- that's the whole entire fight. It's just like two old men on top of a tanker just beating the fuck out of each other, because because of old of shit that happened in the past. So it's like that kind of shit where it's just a battle of fists, and like who's gonna go down first? For a supreme, not a regular god, but a supreme god. For a supreme god, like he's so worried about getting hit all the time. Like why does he even have to dodge? Didn't really understand that. Yeah, bro. I would. I would do the the opposite of the hand from Okuyasu, and then just add space in between us, so that if he ever tries to punch, he just misses. Just almighty push people. If if I had a yeah. guess about that, I would say it's because he's spending so much energy trying to stay in control that if he takes damage, that's going to disrupt it. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of background that's going on too. So it's like everything's delicate. Probably, Mubong is like up, up, face to face with the fucking king of men. Or at least half, half of him. And well, we also did get that little flashback of uh, oh, Mubong yeah. thinking about Tagatha. It's like, was it a? Um, what, what's the his old, name? The, the king? old dude. Yeah, the fucking just the dude with the eye. Yeah, what is his name? You mean the king? Yeah. Yeah, just the king, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's just, he, his name started with an A, but it's just the king. Like, Asmodeus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when the king and Tagatha fought, like, with, uh, all, they went all out, and uh, the king won, right? That that could also be a thing, where Mubong's like, well, if Tagatha lost to that, I don't want to get touched by that either. I don't know. I think, like, when it comes down to it, like, that might be something that, that gets used against him. Like, I seriously wouldn't doubt if by the time that Mori comes back and then, like, doing that whole little word exchange that he's just like, well, if you're such a supreme god, then, like, why the fuck are you dodging every move? Like, we shouldn't even be able to kill you. Blah, blah, blah. You know? And he'll probably take that as a challenge and then, like, actually get hit with something and be like, oh, 
Like, I should actually take this seriously. I could fucking die. They, this guy could kill me. Like, as if he wasn't the only person we already knew that he could kill him. You know? So, uh, hopefully we could see, uh, these, I guess, rematches at this point now, right? With, I guess we're at the point where the author wants to just move on and get towards the end because... You know, we would have to cut back to their fights, which would prolong what's going on with Mubong and the state of everything else. So I guess instead of showing it, let's just move let's just move on and just have this dialogue pop up to briefly explain what was going on in those fights. Which um no bueno. I wanted to see the I wanna see the fights, man. I wanted to see more bunny and Uma. Yeah, I want to see Uma use the bat and whether or not she's using it like Bake is or not, you know? Fuck, yeah. Maybe because it would get too intense and then they would do some some shit that would change the story. <laughs> so he's like, I better stop here before I fucking make an, another tangent storyline. If anything, it'll, it'll be like exactly what Danny said and we'll have the time traveling. So we'll just go back and, we'll, you know, get to that point where we can have them more involved in the crucial battles. Like when they split off these gods one v one, maybe Bamsa will get a rematch with Uma if she ends up like reviving or regenerating or whatever the fuck. Yeah, cause she dead, as far as we know. Which, um, yeah, that sucks, man. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah, then that you know when I saw her like crumbling, I was like, oh, she's coming back, obviously, right? Right. Cause, cause Bake's not even there right? when she's dead. Yeah, for real. Like, come on. There's yeah. no, th there's no, there's no like. Uma. Yeah. Cool. Exactly. You still don't know where he is, right? Last time we saw him, he was um. Talking to. The fox guy. Jeez, why am I forgetting Opio? his name? Yeah, he was talking to him. Who's also dead? Yeah. Yeah, uh, and I think they. Yeah, he's just easy. Yeah, Bake's either dead or he's just missing, like everyone else. And I guess again, you know, he is. I guess he's just not a strong enough character to be relevant anymore with what's going on. I guess. Well, at least right now in this current time where everybody's fighting fucking gods. Yeah, that makes sense. But he does have other obligations. You know, he is kind of like filling out the plot. Or like the plan B. I feel like his only obligation for this one, however, was was just to get Uma back. But that could be just me. Well, also to the the Tagatha stuff of the resurrection and all yeah. that. Yeah, but he was trying to prevent it. Oh, and the Wi-Fi stuff too, that we saw. Like that's what everyone was predicting, right? Was the the final stations for the Wi-Fi? Yeah, but like at least in at least in this in this whole setup right now with the whole battle going on between everybody. Like, bike would get fucking demolished. Like, let, let, let's just let's just be real. He's not he's not suited to stand face to face with Mubong, or at least with any at least with any of them. Uh, so, right on, guys. I think with that we could wrap up today. While we wait for the next episode, guys, and the new chapters, you can send us an email on podcast at gmail dot com if you have any questions or comments. And then you can follow us on social media at Unverse Podcast anywhere you go. So thank you again, guys, and we will catch you later.